Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Monday Q&A call on the speakerfocus.com platform. I am the world's number one speaker coach, Kevin T. Robertson, America's leading focus expert. And I'm here with the entire team at Speaker Focus. I want to give a shout out to my co-founder, Austin Troy. I couldn't do it without him. Austin is on travel. He is in mid-flight right now. He could not make the Q&A. So if you have any questions pertaining to technical questions, relay those questions to Austin through support at speakerfocus.com. We are here each and every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern, and we are tackling the biggest challenges that you face with growing your speaker brand. Let's be clear exactly what we do at speakerfocus.com. We help speakers attack the challenges that they face, even when they don't even realize, as I am talking to speakers globally every single day, some speakers don't even realize that they are struggling with these type of things. Number one is always the messaging. If you don't have the right phraseology, you cannot connect your speaker brand with the target buyer who controls the budget. Number two, having the right kind of sales tools. If your speaker video demo isn't on point, if you don't have a speaker info kit, a button that they can download, the meeting planner should be able to find all of your sales tools within 10 seconds. They need to see your mainstay headline. They need to see your logo. They need to see your brand. They need to see your, uh, your, your, your slogan. They need to be able to understand what you do within 10 seconds. Can they scroll down? Boom. See your speaker video demo. Boom. Right under that, click on your speaker info kit. Also, we help speakers build a real business and request the right fees. I'm so sick and tired of speakers. I hear it every day. Well, what do you charge? Oh, I charge $350 to $700. I'm not talking about getting paid like a high fee consultant. I'm talking about getting paid like a high fee speaker. If you're not charging at least $5,000, you don't understand how this game works up here. Let's move on to the next thing that we help you with and we directly address these challenges. This is why we, we were uniquely and specifically designed and wired to serve you at the highest level possible. Another thing is improper social media management. Damn it, if I keep seeing this over and over and over again, I don't know how many more times that I need to say this, that you should be giving away more free information than anybody else in your space. I don't know what you're holding back for. There are many people out there that need your kind words medicine in your message. There's many people that need, could use your type of signature programs, your type of help, but many of you just won't pick up the phone and start posting videos, writing LinkedIn articles so you can get some organic reach. You simply won't do it because you're afraid. You don't think that I know that fear is, is resides within. You got to get past that fear. You got to overcome those obstacles and you need to be in attack mode. You have to be in attack mode. Next thing is social media management. We're talking about free distribution, like we teach you in module five, and paid distribution. I talk to speakers every day, I keep telling you. I am seeing speakers book speaking engagements left and right with the cold email outreach that's crushing it right now. You have to be able to manage your sales cycle properly, and you also must understand how to build that speaker growth engine. Austin talks about the, the, infrastructure, the infrastructure conversion. How are you supposed to build that speaker growth engine so it can convert at a high level? A lot of you don't understand sales. Don't worry about it. If you get there, if you can make it there from modules one through four, it is the preparation that gets you ready to meet Mr. Austin Troy so he can help you with that conversion infrastructure. So you can be booking speaking engagements and converting them at a high level. Now let's move on to Another stage, a lot of you don't have your booking information packet done. A lot of you don't have your speaker engagement agreement upgraded. You don't have all the micro specific verbiage inside of there. You're not sending out your speaker, uh, engage, uh, not, not the engagement agreement, I apologize. The speaker pre-programmed questionnaire. That's what the meeting planner should be filling out so you can gain all the necessary insights to deliver service to that organization at the highest level possible. Joe, I see your hand up. You're the first question. I'll be right with you. I got to be able to finish my monologue so you understand what's really going on here. So once you get the infrastructure together, now you can start doing outreach. A lot of, a lot of you, your phraseology is all wrong. Your verbiage is all wrong on your website. 
That's the reason why. And a lot of you, I got to say this. A lot of you are taking your phraseology and you're taking your signature programs. You're taking it too light. You're not taking it serious enough because the bullshit submissions that I give back lets me know that you've been up Netflix and chilling. You've been playing grab ass with your significant other. You have been doing something other than focusing in on your messaging. Because if you were focusing on it and you looked at the specific notes that I put back in there, I'm telling you right now, half-ass messaging equal half-ass paycheck. So when you go work your 40 hour plus a week job, do you want half your paycheck on for after you busted your ass all week? Do you want to get half your money on payday? No, you do not. So when you play around with the messaging, when you don't put the effort, a lot of you, I put this in there for a lot of you. I put down there, dig deeper. I don't know what the hell you're scared of. You're a subject matter expert. Act like it. Dig deeper and your opening paragraph should flow a little bit better. See, it, it should have some type of finesse flowing in and out of your word sequences with some type of smoothness and agility. You're not doing that. So I have to be the asshole and say, it's wrong. Fix it. Upgrade it. I make suggestions of how you can improve it. I'm not going to do the whole damn assignment for you. You're not working hard enough. All of the speakers that are earning revenue on our platform, they are listening to everything it is that we're saying. Now, you can play around with this shit if you want to. But when the check gets light and you don't know how to operate in the marketplace, don't say I didn't tell you. You don't have to agree with everything I say to you, but maybe my 2,750 plus paid speaking engagements is giving you a lot of insight right now. Maybe me earning $50,000 USD, being in every little scenario. So when you send me an email, I already know what to say to you before the meeting planner even says it. I know how to keep you in a deal. People send us emails all the time. KTR, they gave me, they, they wanted, uh, I wanted this amount, but then they came back and offered me this amount. A lot of you are blowing the deal because you're not sending me the email responses that the meeting plan is sending you. I can keep the deal going for you. You know why? Because I know how. Why is that? Because of proper phraseology. I want you to be as good as me at this one day. You need to listen to what I'm saying. Your phraseology is horrible. You need to spend more time on developing proper copy because I can see it as soon as I go to your website. And if I can see it, <laughs> the person controlling the check they can see it as well. This is all about getting you prepared to do business with the people who control the budget. Joe Johnson, you're the first person on the Q&A who has a question. Joe, talk. What up, brother? Can you hear me? I hear you just fine, man. Whatever microphone you use, it's coming through loud and clear. Cool, cool, man. Happy Monday, man. Happy to be here. Um, yeah, man, I got a decent amount of questions. I want to start with where we, the, the assignment last night. Um, I appreciate the feedback and really just optimizing my copy with yep. the signature programs, the speaker info kit. Um, dude, I'll be, I'll be straight up. Like I, on some level, definitely half ass my way through those things. Not half ass, but could dig deeper and need to dig deeper. And so I recognize that. Um, I would just love like from, from a copy perspective, it's definitely kind of like I mentioned in the email, um, it's definitely an area where I'm exposed. So I have got a couple books that my friend who's in marketing recommended to me. I, yeah. I would love to just like, in terms of optimizing my copy and optimizing my copywriting skills, some things that you've done as an entrepreneur to do that, some resources that you could recommend. I know there's some lessons in the course, which I'm about to go through as well as I get through, I think it's module three or four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, just like some frameworks to think through as, as I try to optimize that skill set. No problem. Okay. So I want you to listen to me very carefully because reading copywriting books, listen, I've, I've spent like 30, 40, almost 50 K on copywriting courses over the course of my career. Yeah, you yeah. have to learn to get good at it. Now, some, some of the copywriting courses were for, for presenting yourself on the media. You know, there's a certain way in which uh, it's a certain, like the producers of podcasts and television and radio, they're looking for certain phraseology. Yeah. So I understand what that phraseology is to connect with the person who wants to bring me on as a guest. Same thing with speaking. So there's a lot of, uh, Steve Harrison has a great system. That's one of my colleagues in my industry. Steve, Steve knows how to connect with the media. Uh, I've, I've had, I've hired uh, some publicists before. They didn't really do a lot for me, 
but I hired a publicist one time, not even gonna mention their name, and they work with a lot of Hollywood celebrities. They took my eight grand. They didn't really get me a lot of bookings, but let me tell you something. They taught me how to write some really good copy that would get you attention with the media. So those are two things. Sometimes when you purchase a program, you don't get out of it everything you anticipate to get out of it, but you still get, get something some, out of it. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you get so different. I'm telling you, forget the books for a second, Joe. You're, you're a sharp enough entrepreneur with this is what you need to be doing if I were you. I'm gonna tell you the number one thing I do. First of all, I got over 3,500 books in my personal library. I, I am obsessed with consuming audio books now because that is the best way I can take in the information. If I'm, if I'm on a walk, if I'm doing a project out in the yard, you know, I'm, I'm real active outdoors. So I don't listen to a lot of music that I know the lyrics to with all the hit records that I know in my head. And I'm a former musician, right? I've been in the entertainment industry my whole life. I write music, I produce it. I made, I was on tour with Notorious B.I.G. before he passed away. I made a record with, uh, with rap legend Biz Marquis before he, for, uh, when I was on tour with them back in the day. I know music but I don't take a lot of it in right now because I'm on a different level, bro. I need to be doing hundred million plus dollars. Whatever is whatever is the vibrational frequency on that level, that's all mm -hmm. I need. Now, Best. so when I, do, when I do read a book, Joe, this is what I do. When you get to my age and my level in this game of mastery, I'm only looking for about 20% of what the book has to offer. 80% I already know. Like, I don't care what book it is especially when you get to my level, I need the 20% that I don't know. I, I need to sharpen up on some skills where like I'm, I'm real heavy in AI right now, me and Austin, real heavy in artificial intelligence, building software. I am literally out of my pay grade when it comes to that. So I consume a lot of audio books. Maybe I need to listen to all of it, but on the level, when it comes to sales, and I'm, I'm looking for the little nuances. I'm looking for what is that one thing in that system of that Jordan Belfort with straight line selling system? Sure. What's that thing that Dan Locke is doing? What is that thing that Frank Kern is doing? What's that thing that Gary Vee's doing? What's that thing that Alex Becker's doing? What's that thing that Sam Others is doing? I'm calling out all heavyweights and giants. These are people in my mastermind that I listen to. Oh, I don't listen to them, 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 them low level guys. They everybody chasing the same couple of scraps, bro. I, bro, I'm playing for I'm playing for bigger. I'm playing for bigger stakes. So I listen to all of the guys who run shit on the internet. Those are the guys that are, they all share information. Your Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, all of these guys share the same. They all understand sales funnels like me and Austin do. They all, watch this. This is why all of them are attacking disease at a cellular level. That's why me and Austin take Vion. Grant Cardone just purchased 10X Health System. I can't remember the other gentleman's name, but they're heavy into that shit right now, bro. You know why? Because these guys, that make the bigger money, they all are trying to figure out a way to extend their lives. Dana mm -hmm. White's doing it right now with UFC, totally reversed his health situation. I just lost 25 pounds. These guys, you gotta understand, it's all scientific. And this degenerative mm -hmm. disease is reversible. So I'm heavy into that right now, artificial intelligence. I'm taking in everything I could take in. Now the other stuff when it comes to sales and things like that, communication, everything, I'm only looking for like 20%. 20%. Now, right. you now you know how I consume information. I cuz I'm a, I'm the best auditory listener. If if I just listen to it one time and I have a photographic memory, I'm like, "Oh, that's how that works." See? It clicks, the light bulb goes up. "Oh, that's how that works." Boom, I got my 20% worth me purchasing the book. Now, let me tell you what you should be doing as a speaker. Especially you, Joe, because you run an agency, you work with speakers, you're a pretty astute entrepreneur right now. Your struggle is not the delivery of the content. Your struggle is not your charisma. Your struggle is not your oratorical skills. We're not worried about that with you. You're coming into your own. Not that you can't get better as a speaker, but you're already articulate. Not, that's not the concern for me. The concern for me is that because you're so confident that you, you fall into a trap of speakers that don't, don't take the message as serious. And I saw that in your submission. So I'm going to tell Correct. you what I need you to do. I'm going to tell you what I need Correct. you to do. See, you're cool. so good at what you do. You're taking the shit for granted that really makes the money in this industry. And I've been through it before. So what you should be doing is what I do. I interview meeting planners. I call them up and I ask them how their business is structured. What is working for them? How have they survived through the pandemic? How has their, how is their, uh, how is their audience or, or the constituents in their circle 
how are, how are they being impacted? What is the biggest yeah. challenges that they face? Yeah. Like I'm, I want to know what hurts. Mm -hmm. You got to get hard data. Fuck that book. That book is giving you from their perspective and their experience. You need to go talk to the marketplace because the market is shifting all the time. You see the shit that just happened to crypto. Yeah. Everybody has been all crypto happy. Good for you. I am not investing in anything that I can't touch or see. And I know it's super volatile. And I know people have been doubling down on crypto left and right. But you know what? A lot of $1 billion just got wiped out with people investing in crypto. You know why? Because it's not stable. It's not proven. I don't care what anybody says. So I invest in things I know, which is consultancies, coaching programs, S&P 500. I do know real estate, but real estate is still, everybody's talking about how they're crushing it in real estate. People are taking heavy losses in real estate right now, but nobody's talking about that shit. I invest in what I know, which is educational training, the golden triangle system, Joe, speaking, coaching, and consulting speaking, coaching, and consulting. That's how you can do high six and seven figures in this industry. So what you should be doing is talking to the marketplace. You should be reading every article you can, type in a Google search. How is, the, how is, the, uh, how is COVID-19 uh, or how is the pandemic impacted meeting planners? What is the hardest thing meeting planners have to do? Start getting the data. Start reading articles of people who know what they're talking about. Read about 10 articles and you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. And then, your phraseology is going to be different because now right. you're going to say, okay, my leadership programs now know how to connect with the very mm -hmm. thing that I just read, the very thing that I just heard with my own ears. All these meeting planners are struggling right now. The thing that pisses them off the most, Joe, and I talk to meeting planners every single day, so I know what I'm talking about. Oh, KTR, we just got so tired of speakers really not being uh, prepared. Like they think we're supposed to just give it to them. All this prima donna shit is running rampant. There's so many speakers that feel like they're entitled to get the booking just because they have some professional credentials. Joe, if I, if I wanted to, I could pull my pants down and take a dump on every speaker in this marketplace because none of them have the kind of credentials that I do. They don't have a day named after them in Brooklyn, New York. I'm one of few African-Americans. Let me see. Uh, Black Caesar from Black Inc. got a day named after him in Brooklyn. Notorious B.I.G., Rest in peace, got a day named after him. Fat Joe, famous rapper, got a day named after him. We don't even want to talk about my co-author in the book with Tony Robbins and, and, uh, and Jim Britt and Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. Let's throw that in there as well. I got so many feathers in my cap. If I put feathers on my, you can't see the cap, okay? So forget about the credentials. I'm talking about value. It's so many people, damn it, that don't deliver the value. All they want to do is rely on the feathers in their cap. And that's bullshit mm. for the meeting planner. Mm. Meeting planner don't give a damn about your credentials, Joe. They don't care no. about how great you are. How are you going to help me when I go to your website? See, this is why the messaging is so important, Joe. This is why the big vein in my forehead is popping out right now. Because why? Because the messaging and the phraseology on your website is the first line of defense for your speaker business. It is the very first thing the meeting planner see. So see, I could show you better than I could tell you. I'm tired of talking to y'all. So Joe, let me just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about right now. Man, I hope everybody can see my screen because I'm sick and tired of having to see this every single day. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, let's just go to my website. Now, if you can't, if I can't see everything in 10 seconds, I'm a meet, Joe, I'm not looking at it like I'm a speaker. Stop thinking like a speaker. Correct. You need to be thinking like the meeting planner. You know what I see in 10 seconds? Remember, your website needs to be meeting planner friendly and leadership centric. Joe, I don't have to say shit. I have to say nothing. You see my logo right there? Leadership strategies and magnify success. Phraseology, my brand, my logo. Who am I? I'm America's leading focus expert. Oh, okay. This is, this is all the places that he's been. That's inconsequential, by the way. Increase your company's employee engagement with KTR. Boom, you can book a call right now. If your engagement is messed up, which it is, why do you think I have that phraseology on my website? Because LBGTQ- Market plus, told you that. Yes, because the market already said that to me. Every yeah. meeting plan I'm talking, Joe, every meeting plan I'm talking to, I'm hearing the same bitching and complaining and moaning. Oh, KTR, we're burnt out. Charlene Giselle, I taught her to create signature programs to deal with the burnout. 
She's blowing up right now. Wasn't booking any paid speaking engagements over fifteen hundred dollars. Now she got New York Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange. She's on fire because oh, she yeah. because she did the freaking work. Now, why is it okay? Now you see the speaker video demo. Speaker yeah. info. Kit. We just might as well go ahead and run this. For those of you who do not understand, this is the reason why I don't have to say shit. I let the sales tools do the talking for me. Now, mm -hmm. here we go. All right, Joe, just, just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and let this video play. Is rated F. Wait a minute, this video is rated F for focus. Oh my God, it looks like a movie trailer. This video is rated F for focus. It's not if we're gonna have to deal with challenges. It's just a matter of time of when. When? When the wind comes. And it will. And it will. Are you prepared? If you're strong enough, do you have the skill set? Have you built yourself up when calamity is happening, when tragedy is going on? Get them KCR. To invest into yourself. This is the time to make plans so that you can become more empowered and make sure that you can stand on your own two feet. Hey, Joe. Joe, you listening to me? Joe, you still there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I had muted myself. No, yeah, it's okay. I, I, I'm listening, man. Are you, li it. are you listening to my phraseology that I'm saying and, I, and I'm doing this talking headshot? I am. I'm, I'm talking to the meeting planner, Joe. Are you prepared? It's Go ahead. What were you about to say? Mm. Joe, what were you about to say? Well, I was going to say, I bet all that language was language that you heard from Hello. Every KTR. Last... KTR. Yeah. KTR. I, I was saying, uh, I bet I bet all that that language that you were saying was shit that you heard from them in your conversations. Absolutely. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I am, Listen, a lot of coaching programs are telling you what to do, Joe, but very few people have the skill set to show you how to do it and more importantly, tell you the reason why you should be doing it. I'm walking through this because all of you, if the meeting planner can't find, locate all your information, which is what we're teaching you on this platform, if they can't find the phraseology, you're working backwards. Let's keep moving forward because this is so important. Kevin T. Robinson is an international keynote speaker and trusted advisor to some of the biggest high-profile brands in the world of business. Kevin delivers presentations to top companies through simple, practical application strategies that increase the power of your team's focus. Okay, Kevin delivers simple, practical application strategies that delivers the power of your team's focus. What is that saying to you, Joe, if you're a meeting planner, you're ready to write the check? It's saying exactly what I'm asking for. I'm talking to these people too, man. I, I want tools. These people want Joe, Joe, I can't, I can't hear you. Something, something happened to your audio. Like that language right there is, I pretty much heard that on a call today with the meeting player. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Your, uh, your, your call was breaking up a little bit, but you came back. All right. You hear me? Yeah, no, no, I hear you now, but it's kind of hello, hello. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of broken up. What's saying exactly what they're saying? The simple, practical tools. That's what the meeting planners are asking for. There you go, right there. Okay, now I'm walking you through this because I don't know if a lot of you have seen my speaker video demo. My guys out in California just finish it up for me, and uh, we can ready to do another upgrade overhaul to my website, and it's going to be even more meeting planner friendly and leadership centric. My website is stri strictly designed for the people with the budget to hire me to speak. And that's why you see me using the type of phraseology. That's why when I tell all of you, dig deeper, you need to go and get the messaging. You're, a lot of you, you're overthinking shit. You need to go listen to the market. And yeah. when, you hear, when you hear these people complaining the way I do, then you can create scripting. This was all a script. Some of it was a loose script that I said because I, I know... I'm such a good speaker at this stage in my career that I knew what to say without even really thinking about it. But a lot of this was scripted out. You hear Nikki Anstey from the UK is one of our top coaching students. Nikki did my voiceover because why, why do I have a British accent? Because a poll was taken that said a British accent 
converts at a really, really high level. This is all scientific. So I got Nikki to do the voiceover. I wrote out a script. I said, Nikki, I just need you to say these words right here. And then my guys just dropped in all of the all of the, uh, the, the audio where it was supposed to go. Let's continue. The global pandemic has really caused us to stress out a whole lot. I'm sorry, I'm speaking specifically about the pandemic. Why would I do that, Joe? Joe, you there? He must got me on mute or something. Joe, did I lose you? Okay, his audio must be down. Anyway, trying to make an example. I'm, I'm here to teach you how I put this stuff together and the methodology behind it. Hold on, let me see. Let me, let me go to the Q&A. Okay, he says I'm here. I can't hear you, bro. Can you unmute me? Okay, hold on. All right, all right. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, I don't, I don't know what happened, but don't worry about it. We'll fix it. Let me go back to um, there's Joe. Allow to talk. Okay, Joe. Can you? Are you there? Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm here, man. You got me now? Okay, yeah, I got you now. Sorry I got that. You. Yeah, I switched yeah. over to my computer, so you had to unmute me again. Yeah, man, I mean, this is this is what I'm getting from this, right? And I know this lesson. I've learned this lesson many times as a business owner, and I, I've actually been implementing this a little bit. Is like, It's like, don't overcomplicate this. Go to the market, listen to what the market's saying, and then integrate that into everything that you're doing and, and sell the market what it's asking for, more or less. And that's on, like that's marketing 101 to a degree, right? Is like implement all of that, what the market is saying, what your target buyer is saying mm -hmm. into your messaging. So then they go and, and listen to it. It's like the sales call we had. And it's like, dude, this motherfucker is like inside my head, right? Yeah. Like that, that's what I'm hearing from, from you yeah. in, in this video. Okay, so the key is this. You understand it. Now you got to go out and implement it. Right. You got to take a deeper dive into asking them very specific questions, not just... See, I know these target buyers. It never changes. When you get to my level in this game, everybody has the same problem. So I just take my branding. My goal is to organize your team's focus. So I take my brand and employee engagement is my thing. Because how, how are you going to have employee engagement without focus? You can't. So then my strategies help magnify success in your team's vision. So you need to figure out what your brand does and then ask the market those specific questions, and then your signature programs need to solve that problem. So I just want to make sure I had the audio back. I believe that the chat is blowing up and y'all need to be like, we, we need to go over this right now because this is a major, major problem as I'm getting submissions for phraseology and messaging. And every single thing I'm showing you right now, the foundation of it is, is messaging. And if you don't get this part right, it's going to hinder you and it's going to hurt your pocket. When you get it right, you're going to be beating them off with a stick like I have to for my speaker focused sales funnel. And for, listen, I haven't even opened up my tour schedule yet. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not ready. Y'all got, y'all got to wait because I'm not ready to deal with that yet. I will be ready to, all I got to do is just turn it on and turn it off. That's how, when you get it dialed in, that's how easy it is. All right, let's finish. Cause I want you to pick up on this phraseology. I created a focus acronym to help your organization come out of this pandemic bigger, better, faster, and stronger than ever. I created signature programs to help your team come out of the pandemic better, bigger, better, faster, stronger than ever. And then we start getting into the signature programs. Now, if your video is not translating like this, you need to rework your shit and do it over. I'm going to break down the acronym for staying focused on your goals. Talk to them, KTR. Foresight. <laughs> Ah. The very existence of what it is that you do and the leader that you want to be is all about foresight. Think about the You're not a real leader unless you teach other people how to do what you do and unless you teach other people how to get money. Let's go. Future, focus on the second right now because that is the connecting point that's going to ultimately get you where it is that you need to be. Now, the O in the acronym is optical. Webster's defines optical as any type of device that aids you in sight. You got to get down and dirty with it. You got to get in the trenches. You have to be able to see your goals very, very clear. The C in the acronym for focus 
is for cataracts. Cataracts is a gray or opaque area which causes partial or total blindness. Many of us, when it comes to our dreams, <laughs> we suffer from possibility blindness. You cannot continue to let that happen. It's your responsibility to wake up every single day and go after your dream. The you is for utopia. Utopia is a perfect world or social order. Now, Notice how I got the lower thirds at the bottom of the screen too. Take notice, that's my platinum leadership series. I have executive, platinum, gold, all these different leadership series. Why would I wanna call it a leadership series? Because leadership is the most requested, most bookable topic at conferences, corporate meetings and events worldwide. This is not called the motivational speaking industry. This is called the self-help industry and your leadership topics, no matter what your niche is, Leadership is the Trojan horse is going to get you through the door every single time. I had Michael Towers argue with me and said, no, I'm a motivational speaker. I said, Michael, listen to me. Commit and submit to the, to the training program. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. Michael Towers just booked his first international speaking engagement, left his job nine months ago. He's tracking on an average of twelve dollars to $25,000 a month for his speaker business. This shit is no joke when you listen to me and stop fighting and resisting so much. And a lot of you are in your own way because you need to just stop overthinking shit and start producing and following the blueprint. And you always got help here. So don't give me that shit about we're not helping you. So you people suffering from perfectionism out there, I want you to drop it. That's a bad habit. You got to stop being overwhelmed. You got to start simplifying things in your life. Real focus is concentrating on one thing at a time. And I don't promise it to you. I guarantee you, if you just start focusing on the one thing, it's automatically going to raise the visibility of everything else that you're doing in your life. The S, the acronym for focus, is for scope. Scope is the area that the mind can cover. Your brain makes up about 2% of your entire body weight. We're only using about 7 to 15% of our mental capacity. We aren't even working our brains as hard as we possibly can to get the most out of it. You got to own your goal. Do it now. Do it today. Not tomorrow. It's right now. Live in this second right here in this moment. Get focused about what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen. And attack your goals and focus. Every now and then, the speaking industry is blessed with the transcendent talent that delivers real strategies that bridges the gap between chaos and clarity. Explore partnering with Kevin T. Robinson for an unforgettable customer service, life-changing kind of experience. Explore partnering with Kevin T. Robertson for an unforgettable customer service, life-changing kind of experience micro specific phraseology to the person who controls the budget why in the hell would you not want to make them happy that is my number one goal that is what we're teaching you on this platform somebody is understanding why i am going to my website because i'm telling you what to do and i had to do it as well i had to go through the same thing that i'm requesting of you i had to do the same exact thing i hope somebody is getting it i hope it's sinking in we're not done. I'm going to let the speaker video demo run in this entirety, and then we're going to get to the speaker info kit, because somebody out there needs to hear this tonight before we get into, and anybody else got questions? By all means, you, you should be asking questions. Austin's not available tonight. He's on travel. If you got a technical question, send it to supportedspeakerfocus.com. This is a huge problem. We need to address it. You need to get your work done. So yours can have the outcome just like mine. Remember, I am here to partner with you to create customized signature programs, hour long keynote speeches, two hour long educational keynotes, half day programs, two to four hours, full day programs, four to eight hours. I can also offer you executive coaching, on site strategic work sessions to be able to work with your team. There is truly medicine in the message. In the medicine that's in my message to you, it's all about being able to stay focused on next level success. The medicine in my message to you is staying focused on next level success. I literally wrote a script out and I had those little sound bites in there. I, I probably recorded maybe, maybe six hours worth of content to be able to, to, be able to get five, five minutes and 43 seconds or whatever. It is. No, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, Mine is, my, mine's a, yeah, yeah, five, for about five minutes and 43 seconds to be able to get all of that. Here are a few reasons why hiring KTR is a smart business decision. 
Kevin is easy to work with. I'm sorry. Let me back that up because that's real strategic as well. Here, are, there is a, a form in the speaker toolkit called reasons to hire you. It gives them every single reason. Here's a, here's a reason why hiring KTR is a smart business decision. Kevin is easy to work with. Let's continue to move forward. This is the kind of phraseology. Oh, this, this type, type of stuff gets me excited. Makes you look like a rock star at your event. You're not making a meeting plan look like a rock star at your event. You don't need to be in this industry. Builds dynamic partnerships and strategic alliances. Why do I want to build dynamic partnerships and strategic alliances? Why would I want to do that? Because I want to repeat business. Why do you think I've done over 2,750 paid speaking engagements? Somebody ain't listening to me tonight. Delivers massive return on investment. The only reason why the meeting planner wants to hire you is because they're going to get a return on their investment. It ain't about you. It's about them. Transfers knowledge at a high level. Deliver it's not about that motivational, fluffy, uh, motivational, saucy, fluffy dialogue. That shit is over. You got to deliver value at a high level. And I'm delivering what? This is a show-stopping, thought-provoking performance. Show-stopping, thought-provoking performance. Oh, I'm going to put something on your mind, and I'm going to shut it down. That's not a promise. That's a guarantee. Teach a simple and practical learning application. Simple, practical at learning applications. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not going to teach that. My strategies are going to be easy to understand because I'm going to help you understand them. Show them the how-to. Tell them why they need to be doing it. Don't just give them the what. In order to achieve the impossible, you must have the mentality that you are unstoppable. That is the only way this is going to happen. you got to be willing to pay the price, pay the cost to be the boss. If you're ready to do the unthinkable in your life, if you're ready to dream a bigger dream, if you're ready to elevate yourself to a whole another plateau, then you got to live free. During my Platinum Leadership Series, I talk about things that are going to allow you to meet you right where you are when you're attacking your goals with force. So I make a pledge to each and every conference coordinator that is out there right now. I am here to help you achieve maximum levels of focus. Give me five minutes and I have your conference attendees achieving maximum levels of focus. I am here today and I was put here on this earth to magnify success in your personal and professional vision. Connect with Kevin T. Robinson and set your next virtual conference or on-site corporate event on fire. Joe, please come back. You still there? Joe, you still there? Okay, Joe said unmute again. All right, let me see. Wait a minute. He must have, did he switch devices again? Wait a minute. Hold up. Bear with me, everyone. Just give me a second. <clears throat> oh, a lot of talk. Okay. All right, Joe, you back? Yeah, yeah, you got me. Okay, I got you now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Back. Sorry about that. Yeah, man. I I it's money. It's absolutely money. Okay. Appreciate it. Spent a lot of time and effort in it. A lot of money. Jonathan King, Elisa Allman Baldwin, I'll be right with you. Just give me a second. Let me wrap up with Joe. This um, wait a minute, hold on, Joe. This is a special edition of the Monday Q and A call. I'm so glad that I, I I haven't done this up to this point, but I need to do it because y'all need to understand that the, the first thing that they see when they go to your website is all of this stuff. Now, Joe, I'm gonna go to the last thing on here, which is the speaker info kit. Yeah. Now, so and this and this is what happens. So a lot of my old clients, they're like, oh, KTR. Where's your speaker info kit? So I just send them the old link or whatever. Oh, okay. I love it, Kevin. It, it makes it easy for them to see everything that they need to see uh, when it comes to my to my speaker business. Yeah. Let me uh, let me let me shut this chat chat down. So now watch this. You see the I use a cover sheet. A lot of speakers don't, but I'm different. So I use a cover sheet. Then I get to my speaker one sheet. I show all the value on there. They can't get enough testimonial. Then I go to my bio. Then I start breaking out each one of my signature programs individually, showing more value. 
always you want to demonstrate the what people feel about you. It's not about what you feel about yourself. But Massimo Diamore, former CEO of PepsiCo Beverages, he seems to think pretty highly of me. Uh, Rodney, uh, Rod, Dr. Rodney Williams seems to think highly of me. The International Association of Venue Managers, by the way, one of the biggest conferences I ever spoke at in my life. I was one of 55 speakers at that conference. Get testimonials from your clients. So all your signature programs are broken out. Joe, that's why I told you, take another run at your speaker info kit because it didn't look professional enough. The Who did you, you have a team internally? In there. Yeah, you have a team internally that did this? No. <clears throat> I'm a graphic designer. I did this myself. You did that whole thing. Okay, so cool. I, because I, I, I'm a master at PowerPoint and all this kind of stuff. Now I do I do hire people to do the uh do to do the website for me. But this is yeah. this is a skill that I have, and I spend a lot of time on my speaker info kit because I understand my brand. Like sometimes you give your brand to a graphic designer. Yeah, they, they, they fuck they, it all up. Come on, man, because they're trying to get too artsy. I don't need to get artsy. What I need is information in here. So I just took a I took another run at it. I tried to have a graphic designer do it, but I didn't like she gave me a template that did I didn't like it. So I said, yeah. you know what, I'm gonna do it on my own. Cause you know what? I know where all the content is. I know, I know exactly what visuals to be able to relay. Put the testimonials in there. You see, page after page, it's the same thing. You just need to take your credentials and put them all in chronological order. See, all the clients. It it's it speaks volumes. So KTR, I have a question on flow here and process, right? And, and I'll kind of give you the example as well, and it relates to this. So pertaining this is on your what, website. What kind of flow and process pertain to sales? To sales, sales, flow, sales flow, sales flow. Sales flow, okay. In terms of when this comes up, right? So this is on your website, demo videos on your website. Yeah. Um, all that material is there. Yep. Let's say like today, had a sales call with a lady, actually funny as well, association next September, they have a conference. Guess what types of speakers she wants? You know it. So, uh, leadership, all all leadership, right? Of course. Um, so, how do you like if you have a sales call with someone that's interested in booking you, and you go through the discovery, and you know I went through the process today. You go through the discovery, and then you go, hey, here are the, the the points of my talk. The key here are the you know the, these are the the key takeaways. What do you think yep. of that? Yeah, that's perfect. What is your next? step there are you because you know she was like hey send me an email with some video of you and, and your speakers and what you guys do yeah um so like what do you do you then send this over like what after that initial discovery call and again i i might just have not got here in the course no, what is okay. the next what's the next like step in the process if that makes sense yeah well, of course it makes sense because it's all about managing the sales cycle when you 100 percent you know, the, ne the next stage it comes up is, you know, what is going to be your offering? Are you going to go in as the consultant or the motivational jerk off? Right. You want to go in as a consultant. You got to know which kind of hat to wear, brother. So I go in and listen to them. Once they tell me everything that I know that they need, then I just start talking to them about my signature programs or my offerings that my consultancy can, can provide for them or my coaching or my speaking. I don't even, I don't even talk to them about the speaking. I talk to them about solving a problem. Solving and, problems, and correct. The way to yeah. do that is the coach or the consultant. So I'm, I am mainly got my consulting hat on. And then at the end of the call, after when I know I'm talking to the right person, then I walk them through the needs assessment. And then I'm listening. Remember, selling is you're not convincing them that your speakers or your services are the best. What you're doing is you're listening to them to see if what you have to offer is even a good fit. If it's not, I always give the eject button at the, at the beginning of the call. I always say, listen, before we get too deep into the call, if you're, if, you're really, if you're really not serious about this, if you don't have a budget, if you don't have a date to offer me, if you don't have a venue for me to speak, then that typically means that you're not ready to, to start talking business with me. And I want to make sure that my services and what I offer you is going to be a good fit. For example, if you have a medical... A medical supply conference. Maybe I'm not the best speaker for that conference, unless you want to bring in an outside speaker to talk about leadership and maybe business development. I can help you with that, but that's a that's a reach. I want to do something that's in my niche. I want to do something that that I that I know I can provide value. And if you don't feel like that's it for you right now, we can save each other some time. We can hit the eject button on the call, and it won't be any love loss. 
See, I give them an option right up front because if it's not a good fit, what the hell am I wasting my time for? So after you finish with the needs assessment, do some listening and what you want to ask them, Joe, this is this always prompts the client to give you the information that you need. So, so, so tell me where you are with some of your goals for your upcoming conference. Well, KTR, what we're trying to accomplish with our upcoming conference is they typically give you a three months, six months, nine months, year plus lead on when the conference is coming up, especially if you can catch them during their planning period. I always ask the meeting planner, when is your next planning period coming up? Because they oftentimes have smaller meetings at the local level. They have regional conferences or regional meetings, which require a speaker, sometimes one to five speakers on a regional or local level. At the national level, <clears throat> they need anywhere from 10 to over 25 speakers. Sometimes, again, when I did the biggest conference I ever did was the International Association of Venue Managers Conference in Arizona. I think that was 2014, right around the time I booked the Pittsburgh Steelers. I was on fire back then. Um, I was one of 55 speakers at one conference. So once you, once you know that you're talking to the right person and then you're a great fit, then you're, you're going to let them talk. You're going to say, so tell me about some of the challenges that you're facing throughout the pandemic. What has happened to your organization due to the fallout caused by the pandemic? Are you, is, are your, are, is your organization suffering from employee engagement? Tell me, tell me what kind of challenges are going on in your HR department. How has that affected operations? Was your, is your set, talk, talk to me about your sales numbers. Oh, I, you don't even want to talk about sales, KTR. Our sales are off by 33.8%. They got hard data. They're going to share that with you. I'm going to say, okay, well, the reason why the sales is off is because you have a lack of morale and motivation because your frontline employees are not being spoken to properly. All the managers, 75.6% of managers micromanage. See, I got all this data, bro. I know what they're going to say before they even say it. So they're not being respected. They don't come in with any goals. Less than 10% of your employees actually know what the company vision and mission statement is. And their mouth is on the ground because I'm reading them their hand blind like we're playing poker. I know my client. I know what they're going to say before they say it out their mouths. So then I just keep talking to them, Joe. And I just keep saying, okay, well, then the, 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 the executives... Their listening skills are below 43.2%. So they're just focusing on the money and they're not really focusing on helping people develop. That's why you have wrongful termination suits at an all-time high. That's why your HR department is overrun right now. You're not making a connection with your, there's no engagement. There's no engagement on any level because all of this stems from 87% of your problems in the workplace stem from ineffective communication. Man, by the time I finish talking to them like that, they're like, damn, this guy literally has the medicine to remedy our problem. Oh, my God. Every single last one of them for years and years and years have said, Kevin, that is exactly what's going on in our organization. And it's a whole lot more. I said, don't worry about it. That's very indicative of what's happening because the pandemic has, has caused all of us to, to, to get a little out of sorts and have extra anxiety, including myself. So watch this. This is what I can offer your organization to remedy some of these challenges. I'm not telling you it's going to be an instant fix, but what I am telling you that you will see some behavioral modifications in a 30, 60, or 90-day period. I'm willing to do follow-ups, and all of these things are built into my feet. We'll come back to the feet. Don't worry about that right now. Let's talk about how I can directly address the challenges that you're facing in your organization. And then I just start pulling out all the phraseology, the bullets <laughs> in my signature programs. And I start directly addressing all the challenges. Okay, so the first thing you talked about was lack of employee engagement. Your frontline employees seem to be a little bit burnt out. Uh, every time they get some leave, they suck the leave out, they take off. You got a big, you got a big employee turnover. You got 25 to 30 employees leaving every single month. That's not good. That means you don't have a, a, a employee retention program set up with some type of training that you can offer. You don't have succession planning in place. These are the symptoms of things like that. Yep, you're right, Kate, y'all. We don't have any of that. Okay, no problem. That's fixable. And then the next thing is your managers are micromanaging because they try to manage the job. They need some personality assessment tools for the thinker, relator, director, socializer, simple Myers-Briggs test for everybody will get it going in the right direction. I have a system I created called the mechanics of communication. We're going to talk about gender communication. 
We're going to talk about generational communication. We're going to talk about proximity of communication. We're going to talk about how to use your body and your voice as an effective communication tool. Is any of your team doing any of this stuff right now? Hell no, KTR. They're not doing any of it. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. Okay, everybody relax. Let me finish because I'm not done. Let's talk about the executives. So executives, they listen different from managerial supervisory level and the grassroots customer service frontline employees. So you might want to think about me doing some executive coaching for them because they do not want to be in the same room with the other employees because no one wants to really feel embarrassed. Too much ego, too much emotions going on. If you want me to break it down in the multi-day program, I can offer you that as well. Joe, let me take a pause right there. Tell me what you're gathering from all this verbiage that I'm that I'm I'm speaking to the meeting planner. Tell me what you just learned from everything I just said. Um, in terms of like my own sales process, what no, I learned. No, 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 no. Forget about forget about your sales process. Just as a meeting planner, about how I'm speaking to the meeting planner to help them solve their yeah, problem. Yeah, everything yeah. I just said. What did you get out of that? Hold on, let me get in. Uh, sorry for the background noise. I learned that, um, I mean, dude, you're, you're literally speaking directly to them. Like you, it, again, it kind of goes back to what I'm saying. It's like, you're almost like in their head, you're reading their minds of, like, I was thinking to myself, if someone's dropping those facts, like, it's like, dude, where, where do I, I can't bring you in quick enough. It's like. Um, okay, stop right there. Okay, stop right there. Okay, watch this. You understand it. But are you speaking to the meeting planner like this right now? It's a simple yes or no. No. Okay, now watch this. So that means you have to have better command over your content. Where do you get the content from? You gain experience by listening to the marketplace. That's all I want you to do. Joe, all I want you to do is talk to about 15 to 25 meeting planners. You can call them up randomly, different industries. You're gonna hear all of them is talking the same problem. See, that's the reason why when I go on tour, my calendar is full. That's the yeah. reason why my calendar is overrun with my coaching program because I, I over deliver more than anybody else in my space. I'm not going to let them out hustle me, bro. And yeah. you are you are the ultimate hustler. All you need is the right phraseology. And I genuinely believe that it will be a shift that you're looking for. That 15 to 25 percent shift in the income bracket that you want to be in. Yeah, well, if, if you just phrase the ver the words the right way, bro, that's all you're missing. Yeah, because KTR, even today on my call, you know, I feel really confident in the discovery process, listening to them, running through everything, kind of to your point, like, you know, okay. I think we have good rapport with the meeting planner, where I found myself needing assistance was how do I then, and I think this is part of the hardest part in sales for a lot of people is how do I connect what they need to what we have in a right. manner that like when I, when I shifted from Hey, these are your problems. I understand very, like very I detailed notes, all that stuff. How do I shift that to then selling them on how my program or my team's programs Stop. will, will Stop. alleviate that? Uh, not, you're, you're not, not selling. selling them. Solving, See, solving, solving. solving. Yeah, you're yeah, not solving. selling. Right. Selling is not convincing. Right, I can right. show you better than I could tell you. Let the sales tools do the talking for you. That's people's prop. Joe, the hardest thing I understand, bro. Listen, you're, you're 27, 28, right? 26. 26. The hard, you, all, all since 27. The hardest thing to learn when you're in your 20s is patience. Yeah. <laughs> it's how you're thinking about it. See, Joe, this is what you want to do. You just want to go in and just scoop up all the money at one time. <laughs> I know, man. I know. You got to relax, bro. You Listen, it's going to come through when you have command like I do with talking to these meeting planners. I'm teaching all of you. This is how you get the money. You got to know it that well. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you, just go back to the lab, go dark for the rest of the year, work on your phraseology, go read, spend selling, get the audio book, download it for $11 and some cents, go back in there and listen to spend selling and understand how to deliver from that perspective. Listen to the things that I'm telling you, and it's going to improve your phraseology. See, you're still stuck in selling mode because you know why? Because you don't have the right kind of illustrations and your messaging is weak. And those speakers in your that you represent, they're in the same exact boat. All of you need to overhaul your shit. And when you do, your level yeah. of confidence is going to be totally different. And then when you talk to the meeting planner, see, you're going to have leverage. See, Joe, you still care whether or not they say yes or no. I don't give a damn whether or not. You didn't give a fuck. Yeah. 
I don't give a fuck. If you say no to me, you can stay. Joe, what did I tell you if you, if you don't join this coaching program? You got a million other calls on the calendar. You can no, replace bro, me. I to, remember I told you? I said, I know you're good at what you do, but mark my words. If you don't listen to what I'm saying, you're going to suffer. Yeah. You're going to suffer. We're going to be having the same conversation six months or a year from now. And I, I'm not afraid to tell the meeting planner that. Mm. See, you if when, you, when you're afraid, they're going to smell it on you. I got the leverage. I'm the one who literally can solve your problem. If you don't recognize that I can do that within a short period of time, man, I just hang up and go on to the next person. I don't have to prove myself to you. I just showed you speaker video demo, speaker info kit, all the phraseology and the website. The meeting planner can find out what I'm about in 10 seconds or less. Your website needs to function the same exact way. Joe, I did have Lisa and I did have... Um, I believe I did have another person in there waiting to ask a question. Did you have any other questions or comments that you are, did you have? Um, I had a couple, man, but I'll, I'll let it go. I mean, I feel like I could pick your brain all day. Um, I know I'm going to get some value when you go over to Lisa, but no, man, this is really helpful. Um, I think more than anything now, I'm realizing that this is something that I need to work on and I'm actively working on it. And, you know, that's why I wanted to get into the program. So I'm pumped, man. I see the value of a lot of this stuff and getting it dialed in. I'm connecting with all of our speakers one off as well to help them get their stuff dialed in. So a lot of work to be done, but uh, I'm excited, man. And uh, yeah, Lisa, go ahead. And uh, thanks, KTR. I appreciate you. Glad to no be problem, here, man. Brother. Hey, Joey, I got number love and respect for you, brother. I, I understand your, your quality of what you do. You just got to keep it up, man, and just keep doing what you're doing. Remember, we are always here in the background, always in the background, waiting to help you uh, with your speaker goals and to help you and your team get to another level. Lisa Allman Baldwin, I love her so much. Lisa Allman Baldwin, I love the name. I love it. I see Can the chat going up. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate all the kind Can you hear me? I'm here to help. Hey, Lisa. Lisa, I hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you just fine. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, the internet is off a little bit. Uh, great um, insights that you gave to Joe. Um, thank you. And, 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 and thank you for showing us the video and stopping it and breaking down every single part. That was very, very helpful. Oh, okay. All right. Um, you know, hey, this is why we're here. I've never done that before, but I needed to... I needed to let you see what how my mind works when it comes to working with the meeting planner. You've got to know your client really, really well. And it, 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 it really speaks volumes, just like how you're in with Microsoft right now. you got them feeling comfortable. That's when they want to spend the money when they feel comfortable. Go ahead, Lisa. Mm -hmm. What's your question? Mm -hmm. or yeah. So that was helpful as far as, um, you know, refining our copy whether it's, you know, we're doing long form or short form posts or whether we're reaching out to them directly. Yep. Uh, the way that you broke that down. So thank you for showing us that because that was really, really helpful. You're welcome. So I have a strategy call tomorrow. Uh -oh. and, I, and, I, <laughs> and I just wanted to um, tell you a few key things that was in this guy's um, LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see if you can help me refine a little more how I should, talk to him. Um, and I, and I got a lot out of what you just told Joe, so I will incorporate that, but basically he, I reached out to him, uh, you know, just to connect a while before, um, because I saw that he was a board chair. That's right. And chair, board committee members, they mm -hmm. are key decision makers who control the budget continue. Right. And so, um, it was a, how I connected with him, it was a follow-up, you know, the, that we're supposed to send saying, Hey, did you get my message on LinkedIn? You know, sending him an email. Yep. So he booked the call and then in the Calendly part where they answer the questions Yep. for title, he wrote founder, CEO, and board member, um, doesn't have a website. And then, uh, for the question, please tell me a little bit about what you're trying to accomplish. He said, not quite sure you reached out. So I just wanted to tell you that. No problem. Um, and that, and the, watch this. Don't mm -hmm. let that question, don't let that answer throw you off. That's okay. Because mm -hmm. again, it's really about the at-bats. You're getting another at-bat. Remember, you're not going to try to ask him for anything. Right. You're going to ask him how his organization is managing things throughout the pandemic. You're going to mm -hmm. pick and probe and ask those kind of qualifying questions. You're going to ask him as a board member. If I were you and... He said, I don't really know. Like, trust me, he checked out your website. He's checked out a couple of things. 
but he really like if it's a, if it's a cold email outreach, maybe they don't understand why you reached out. It's your job to explain it to them. I work okay. with companies like yours all the time globally to help people, and they're sticking your the title to your mainstay headline. I teach my I teach my clients how to magnify success in their personal and professional vision. Okay. That that needs to be your opening line, and then go in and start asking them questions. Hey, in order for us. Mr. Such and such, in order for us to get the most out of this call, I just got a couple of questions I want to ask you. And I'd be more than happy to go over some, some strategies with you if you feel like what I'm talking about makes sense. See, okay. you have to show the value first before you ask for the sale. We're not asking for the sale up front. We're not mm -hmm. even talking about selling. That word should never come out of your mouth. Hire me should never come out of your mouth. Right. Listen, I do know that. Mm -hmm. Listen first right? Understand that you do have value. Ask them a couple of questions <clears throat> and then just dialogue with them. Okay. Right. After he finishes talking, I heard you loud and clear. That's very indicative or very typical of the times that we're in right now. Well, I was going to tell you, I have a suggestion for you about how we can move that energy in another direction. <laughs> and then you talk to them about your signature programs. Break the ice with him. Have a conversation. Go back in and take notes. He may be interested. He may not be interested. Okay, well, Lisa, he may keep the call short. He may say, Lisa, well, very interesting what you do. However, we don't have a need for that right now. And then you may ask him, hey, is it okay to stay in contact with you? Mm -hmm. do, do, is, is it, is it, did it make sense to you what I said? Because if it doesn't, I just tell the client, I told the client today, if it doesn't make sense, I could delete you out of the system right now. No, 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 KTR, don't do that. I didn't say that. I want you to reach back out to me. Well, I don't have to reach back out to you. There's a rescheduling link. You can reach back out to me if you want. See, this <laughs> is leverage talk. Right. I right. don't need to reach back out to you. You need to be concerned about what it is that I'm doing because I'm the one that has all the knowledge. This is how you need to talk to the client. It's not arrogant. Right. It's facts. They right. would appreciate the fact that you have, again, I call it KTRCOC, right in there in module number one, command over content. The question is, do you have command over your content? Lisa, you do. So you should go into your call tomorrow with confidence. So Lisa, you you overanalyze. So tell me what your concerns are. Um, <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to uh, read you a little bit about what he does and see if there's any other little thing I should be, uh, you know, besides what you said, if there's some other thing that applies to that. that yeah, um, and, I'm, and okay. I'm glad you're sharing that with me because you should absolutely go, I investigate everybody. I do a background check on everybody before I get on the call with him. Right. I know exactly who I'm dealing with. Tell me about his industry. Okay, so he says, uh, this is from his LinkedIn profile. He says, okay. I'm a two-time two founder slash CEO, board chair, and advisor with a deep background in travel, sustainability, and education industries. I've grown and exited businesses and now consult with a range of executive founders and investors. I love working on tricky problems and figuring out innovative solutions. I have a strong background in marketing, technology, sales, and strategy, and I'm literate in finance and analytics. I advise startups, am an angel investor, and serve as a mentor in a couple of tech accelerators. Outside of this, I work as a consultant and advisor for companies across a wide spectrum of industry size and problem sets. Mm -hmm. um, I love digging into the details with founders, leaders, and boards, uh, and uh he did his training at Wharton and coursework in disruptive strategy at Harvard. Okay. So um he didn't have a I'm looking at his profile. He didn't have he doesn't have a well he does have a company listed because he he has three like looks like two or three different ones. Okay. So um so the one he has on the top uh is a st strategic advisor for this company called Creative Contracts. And he's in South Africa by the way. And mm -hmm. then he, he's a founder of Cicero, which is an education thing. And then he has a, the Sustainable Travel International business. So be, beyond what you told, what you just told me and, and what you told Joe, which I totally understand what you said, I just wanted to see if, you know, based on his experience and what he has listed, if there's any other tweak I should be thinking about there. Okay, well, <clears throat> well, all of that stuff that, you know, obviously the guy's really smart at what he does. What made you reach out to him? How did he get on your list? How did he get on um, your list? It was from several weeks ago when I was looking for board chairs and, um, you know, 
committee CEOs and board chairs. And okay, that, that's so, in this. So, okay. so he, so him coming back to me here, I can tell you, um, mm -hmm. let me see here. Cause remember how sometimes you, you and Austin told us, you know, people might not even get back to your LinkedIn response or email for weeks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I reached out to him, it was, oh, it was like a month and a half ago. Yep. Let's see. Uh, uh, October 1st. And then I followed up. <clears throat> um, at that time, I had uh, LinkedIn credit. So I had sent him a message. And then I followed up uh, last week. Uh, you know, the email said link, LinkedIn connection follow up. And then he booked a call um, okay. three days later. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so obviously your outreach. So he, he, if he didn't want to understand what you did, he wouldn't have scheduled a call. Right. Let's not get too excited because he booked the call and right. let's not get too down because <laughs> when he does book the call, obviously there was some mutual interest. He definitely had to check out your LinkedIn profile. The man has better things to do with his time than wasted to book a call with you. He at least now, now he's curious. Right. So right. if I were you, forget about all the other hats that he wears. I would just be talking to the chair board or committee member. Okay. Bottom line, because because I guarantee he's tied into all kinds of other professional organizations, and if he might not be ready, see if he see when people are impressed enough with your speaking credentials, they will pass your name around. Okay. You might be able to get a referral from him. Maybe he sits on multiple boards who is planning a conference or a meeting. Remember, okay. it's so many different angles to go at them. Once you understand how to manage a needs assessment call, see, I, I know within, within minutes whether or not I'm going to let the call ride for the whole whole way. I Because I, I know how to answer the questions in the beginning of the call to be able to weed out all the imposters. You need to jump right on the call and say, you need to, you need to take control over the call because I guarantee you with the type of credentials that he has, he is an alpha personality, okay? He's probably a thinker and a director and he's, and he's very strong and authoritative. So you're going to need yeah. to take over and just let, don't waste his time. Just jump right into it. Hey, listen, I'm so glad that I saw you on my calendar. The reason for the call is, and just jump into it. Let him know. I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you because I work with chair board of committee members all the time as a consultant. And I wanted to see what I'm taking. A, I'm taking a, a survey. I'm taking, I'm doing a case study. See, ask him. I want you to participate. You ain't got to ask a couple questions for me. You know, this is really, this isn't really about us doing business. And I'm not trying to ask you anything, but I would like to know what are some of the struggles that you've been going through as a fallout uh, due to the fallout caused by the pandemic. You see mm -hmm. where I'm going with all of it, Lisa? Right. I would right. like to know some of the challenges that you've been facing through the pandemic. <laughs> how, how you've been able to how you've been able to persevere through that? Mm -hmm. He's going to tell you what he's going to give you his blueprint. He's going to tell you how he's been able to do it. That's right. going to that the ice. Right. And that, and that's what happened has happened with every single um, strategy call I've had. Uh, I just basically ask them one question and then they just go on and on and on. And I just taking notes. Yes. Because, because everybody has an extra level of anxiety right now. See, this is the reason why you have to ask the right questions because they're going to take you down the road. Lisa, have you ever really thought about this? How, man, how does KTR just make it look so easy? How does he know so much? Oh my God, it's so magical. Why do you think that is? Because these ears have heard every kind of scenario you can possibly imagine when it comes to a chair board, committee member, meeting planner, event strategist. I don't care what their title is. HR director, head of human resources, head of training and development. Mm -hmm. Those are my people. And I needed to listen so I can understand exactly what's going on. The mm -hmm. infrastructure to an organization and the way it's put together, it never changes. Right. Now, the only, um, I guess, hesitation I have is if I say, you know, I, I, you know, help, um, you know, board chairs, et cetera, you know, in different corporations or all, all over the world or whatever I want to say it, if they say, oh, well, what kind of, which companies have you worked for or what, you know, then, and, and you don't have that experience yet, then how do you answer that? Because you've just gone and said that you do this all over the world, but you, you're not telling, you know, you know what I'm saying? You answer the question by your work history. In organizations that I work with, you're going to give them your resume. Give them all of the companies that you work for. 
Talk about how you've helped your companies turn turn their operations around. Talk about how you've helped them manage their energy better. Talk about how you help them find the more authentic purpose. Right. Drop what them. I'm what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, if they ask you the which companies and you and and for all those of us who are starting out, if we don't have company names necessarily to tell them yet how do we answer that go to the companies that you have worked for you've had a job okay. before, correct yeah yes i got you got okay you. i go, see what you're saying okay. draw off of your experience because that's not lying this is gotcha. what i've done in companies that i've worked for this is what i've been able to do i got gotcha. you okay now now your job is not to answer those type of questions you're gonna say mr such and such well my i have a follow-up email that i'm gonna send you Mm -hmm. See, this is where I don't, the game is not to be, so. it's, it's not to be sold, it's to be, you're not supposed to tell it to them all. Right, right. You can go to my website, click on my speaker video demos, click on my speaker info kit. That's literally going to answer any question that you have about my past performance history and anything in there. That's gotcha. the reason why that has to be so strong, because okay. of course they're going to want to know those questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why, why do you think we're trying to work so hard to get you this Microsoft deal done? Gotcha. You're in the system now. Right. You're going to be performing for Microsoft. So guess what? If it was good enough for them, I don't know why I can't be good enough for them. Got it. Somebody sent me a support ticket the other day and said, KTR, this client is asking this, this, this. I said, you know what? The client's asking for too much. If the If what you have is not good enough for the client, that's not the right client for you. See, Lisa, you're worried about all the wrong things right now. Instead of jumping on the phone, asking them questions of how you can help them, you're, you're, you're going back to your deficiencies and your limitations. Why? When you already have a website, sales tools, everything you put into the procurement system for Microsoft, how come it's not good enough for him all of a sudden? Gotcha. You're overthinking it. Yeah. You are good enough. You are worthy. You are a high fee speaker. Do better act right. Have my money. Listen to me. I'm here to help you. <laughs> You think he, you you what you think you think because he went to Wharton Business School you think he got all you think he got it all figured out? Right. Okay. I run a multi-million dollar sales funnel. I don't have it all figured out. Right. Neither does Austin. We wake up every single day looking for solutions to our challenges every single day. Let me tell you something. This this has been in the top 5 worst Mondays I've ever had in my entire life today. Take it on the chin and wake up the next morning with a different attitude. You got any other questions or comments? No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Lisa, in, in closing, okay. Anybody else have any, any questions or comments? Uh, I always I always love to talk to all of you. Lisa, listen to me very carefully. I know I took the, I, I disabled your talking, but you need to have more confidence in your abilities and your signature programs and your value and what you're worth because you are worth it. Okay, I saw Jonathan King. I thought I saw, I thought I saw JK in there one time had his hand up, a loud talking. Jonathan, talk to me, brother. What's going KTR, on? KTR, long time no see, brother. brother. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I hear you. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I said, "What's going on in Southern California?" Hey, man. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really uh, raise my, I raised my hand by accident. But since I'm in the house right now with you, okay, man, I'm so impressed with your website. I don't know what to do. I'm so impressed with your uh, speaker you, info kit. I wish I could just copy it Thank and you, just man. plug all my information in there. Thank you. It looks incredible. Okay. But, but I had a small little win today I want to share with you. Please, because you've, um, you've been going through it lately. Small, so small win, man. Small yeah. win. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I've been telling you that I wanted to to reach out to the city uh, of Murrieta, where I live. It's about an hour north of San Diego. Lot, Lots of folks are coming out here. Lots of businesses popping up out here. Yeah. Right? Everybody wants to leave San Diego and L.A. and come out to this area, right? Mm -hmm. Cheaper homes and everything else. So what happened was um, I joined the Chamber of Commerce trying to see if I could, you know, do business with them. Uh, they've been putting me off. Uh, also uh, ventured out and tried to meet with some of the city reps. But um, a little bit of good luck struck the other week when the city manager and the uh, director of the Chamber of Commerce said they wanted to meet with me. Mm -hmm. So we met today at the wing stop to talk about what we could do for, um, you know, the chamber and the city. Nice. So uh, the city manager more or less said that we've already put together like a committee, like a, a, a diversity, equity, and, and inclusion committee. So we kind of have that covered. Mm -hmm. But they said in respect to our business is in this area, they need a lot of help with DEI. 
Mm. So what they said was, it's right what, we, what we can do, and so I, I gave them, I gave them like a whole list of all of the the workshops that I offered. Instead of courses, I just broke it down into like one day or half day workshops. They loved it. I had like eight different topics, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I said, you know, is there is there a need? They said definitely there's a need. <clears throat> and so what we what we arranged was they said, why don't you come in? Um, you you we'll, we'll choose some basic um, topics on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And they said we want to focus on inclusive leadership. Mm. Right? And then deal with things like microaggressions, like how how do, how do you disrupt microaggressions? Mm -hmm. And they said, many of these business leaders can't give you a day, but they can give you like two or three hours. So they said, why don't we do three workshops for our business, uh, businesses and leaders in the month of February? Okay. And we, the city and the Chamber of Commerce will advertise and market everything and we'll have it at the Chamber of Commerce office. So that's going to be... Um, the 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 first step that I'll have with them in the in the okay. month of February. Okay, now let me let me pause real quick. So you're going in this is this going to be a a free presentation to generate more business and buzz? Yes, it? yes, that's a. Yes. I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you why that's a. Smart I, I don't want to bring up price this time and cut myself out. Yeah, I, I'm gonna no watch. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you why that's smart. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. I'm gonna tell you why that's smart. Because it's the same strategy that we use with Lisa, at least Alman Baldwin, and that's why she's in with she she got into Microsoft in their procurement system now through Blacks in Microsoft. The Blacks in Microsoft have they belong to other associations or organizations as they normally do. All these people with these higher level positions, man, they all roll in the same circles. So now you're going to be in a you're going to be presenting to the chamber. They're going to promote it for you. They're going to put you on their website. You're not charging any money up front, so you're not giving any resistance. It's local, so it's not. It's, all it's costing you is time. So you're going to do a series of workshops. Now, you need to call this the, the uh, Workshop Leadership Series. Okay. When you title it, let me help you with the phraseology. So you're going to give them the phraseology, and you're going to get them to promote it. And then you, you're going to have all the, the value to anybody who attends. And these business leaders... Again, they don't have a whole day, but they got two or three hours. Right. They're going to blast that out. So obviously you want to get it on video, get a photographer in there, get all right. of the content, and then knock it out the park. They're talking about they need exactly what you offer. They want DEI. You're one of the best people in the market space I've ever heard in my life. And everybody's talking about DEI right now because all the companies have to check off the box. Bro, speakers like you have such a huge advantage in the marketplace. So, so JK, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go in there, ha serve everybody up a dish of Jonathan King, blow the stage up in particles, hand everybody their ass, and let them know that you are, you, <laughs> are, you are the preeminent subject matter expert in this field. All, you, all I want you to do is go in there and be yourself because these people are really struggling. They don't understand... Those, uh, uh, those 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 micro expressions they don't understand that stuff like you they're look, struggling look, look, with look, that look, look they don't even understand what dei stands for they they don't I mean, it's during the headlights that's what they I'm don't even about. understand but i say what is an inclusive leader they have no idea what that means of so, course they so don't you basically know why? this is going to be like a little boot camp but broken up into three different you know three different weeks two hours yeah. for each boot camp Yep. And you can take, you can videotape all of this. And then you got a whole seminar series on video that you can break up into smaller mini lessons. And you could use that in your speaker video demo, just like I did with mine. You can put that out there into the marketplace. And now you can really see you need you you can really take advantage of this opportunity because remember this, Jonathan, 75% or more of employees. They shake their head and say, yeah, JK, I know what you're talking about when it comes to DEI. Yeah, diversity, equity, and inclusion. On the inside, they're going, I don't really know what DEI means. I don't really understand it. Do I really understand how people are being- KTR, they out? don't want it out here. I'm telling you right now, there's a strong resistance toward that kind of thing. Okay, but well, they have no right. choice because when you say lawsuits, that's what's going to get their attention. Okay, that's, that's exactly what I was going. When you that's say right. lawsuits and grievances, that's what's getting their attention. I don't know that's if right. you guys heard about it, but- Tesla just had to pay out $125 million to one employee because of racial harassment. 
Yeah. When you say that kind of stuff, that's when they say, okay, I get it. The See, only way people in America get it is like fear or some gain. Fear or gain. That's those two things. If you don't bring those two things up, nobody cares. That's the leverage that you have in the marketplace. Because watch this. Do you really want to look like the company right now? who is not supporting LBGTQ plus issues all across the board? Yes. Do you really want to look like the company that is not welcoming pregnant women back into the workplace Hello. after they've had a baby in the pandemic and almost died? And now you're telling me, I don't, I don't feel comfortable coming back into the workplace? Do you really want to be the company where the six o'clock news is banging on your doorstep now because you didn't care? See, did, now, let me tell you something. They just swept it under the rug for too long. I don't give a damn how comfortable they are without uh, talking about it. The bottom line is here. See, Mar Dr. Martin Luther King talked about this in his speech. The I Have a Dream speech is not what got him killed. He talked about people of color and all, all minorities. It's not just about black. This ain't about black people. This is about all minorities Hello. getting included in the equity in the final stage of this we shall overcome movement. We're in it right now, bro. Right. They have to include you. So if you're a minority right now, good for you. You just got an extra advantage, but they're not just going to give it to you because you're a minority. You got to have your shit together like you do, Jonathan. You have strong signature programs like I'm going to tell Lisa. You are you are it in your space, bro. They don't get no better. I, do, I see DEI every single day. None of them can hold a candle to you. They don't understand it. They haven't been through the stresses that you've been internationally been discriminated against they haven't been through the time you have a very unique experience and this is the reason why you need to go in there they're not going to tell you how it works you're going to go in there and tell them how it works you got it i got it man i'm, I'm going to shoot, shoot those ideas over to you ktr so you can help me with some of the crap in this uh send it to you know, the strategy right. listen I'm, I'm gonna help you come up you you need you need to design a one sheet with your picture on it and that you need to you need to design something you need to give to them and tell them this is what I want you to promote. Right. The right kind of phraseology and everything on it. I'm gonna help you put it together. Okay. I appreciate that, man. All right, boss. Take care. Good job, man. Jonathan King coming through with the share and the win. Bernice Cooper, another uh another person from California. West Coast is representing strong tonight. Bernice, talk to me. Good afternoon or evening for you all on the East Coast. Good evening, Vernice. How are you? Let me let me match your tonality. Let me let me let me let me woo saw for a second. Let me bring <laughs> let me bring the energy down, because Vernice, when I when I called you uh, early on in a couple of days ago, when I was trying to give you some comments about your signature programs, I was in work mode. I was very intense. I came at you real strong. Let me use a softer, more milder, gentler KTR tonight. How can I help you? Listen, um, KTR, I like you because of you are who you are, right? I can handle the intensity, no worries. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. It, it took me a long time to grow into this, but you know, I'm still uh, I'm still who I am. And so, yeah, I can handle it. Yes, um, so I'm, I'm calling because like Joe, um, I, this actually really helped me tonight around phraseology. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that 30 second, very intense call for me to get my stuff together when it comes to my signature programs. Mm -hmm. And um, my question for you, um, the thing you told Joe is really to, to search the marketplace for the answers. Yes. But, and I've done a lot of that. What I'm, what I think, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I don't, I don't wanna speak for Joe, I'll just speak for myself. You have a certain finesse about the way that you write. Right. And it's easy for me to write copy for other people. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to write copy for myself. OK, so I think that's where I'm I'm getting stuck. Um, so so my first question is because I'm still going through the modules is, is there any one module I should be paying more attention to as it pertains to copyright? OK, so I'm going to give all of you a great tool right now. They have different pricing tiers. We don't make a dime off of it, but we do have some strategic partnerships with them doing some other stuff. All of you need to go to jasper.ai. Jasper is a copywriting software that it literally will write an entire book for you if you want it to. Mm -hmm. Non-plagiarized content. I don't have to use it because I've learned how to manipulate this stuff 
you may have to go through it. You're going to you're going to put in there. I need to write copy for social media. And then uh, this is what I wanted to say. You may drop one or two lines in there and then hit hit. Uh, give me some results and it'll give you three to six or however many results you go through there and pull it out. You're going to be like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I was trying to say. And it will help you phrase. It will help you with the phraseology. You may have to pull some of it out and rework it, but yeah. it will help you out with the phraseology. It will help you if you struggle with writing copy. Copy, by the way, that sells. Copy that, that promotes. Sells. Copy mm -hmm. that attracts. Correct. Yep, that's good. Thank you for this uh, resource. I just pulled no, that up. No, right no problem. If you, if you struggle with that, and, and listen, Bernice, it's not that you're phraseology is horrible. Your, some of your word sequences, I'm like, oh, Bernice, if you touch that, I'll never speak to you again. Don't touch that at all. But his, when you say, KTR, you have finesse, that's exactly the, the, the correct word. It's tact, finesse, diplomacy, and skill. Tact is your approach. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Finesse mm -hmm. is flowing smoothly in and out of your word sequences with the greatness of ease. Skill is very strategic. I am, I am very intentional with what I say and how I say it. And now, if you're going to, if you're going to be um, diplomacy, diplomacy is, is understanding who the message is going to. And I talk about all of that on the back end of module one, when I talk about KTR's, uh, KTR's, uh, it's called the art and science of communication. Oh, no, it's, it's the, uh, it's not, not not the command over content. It's a, oh, oh, it's KTR's mechanics of communication. I apologize. I had a brain freeze for a second. It's KTR's mechanics of communication. I go over all of this stuff. It's the why. It's the reason why. Because when you say KTR, you you you, you finesse the words. I I play around with the word sequences. So when I when I get your copy and I send it back to you, you see the way it flows. Mm -hmm. You understand the way it feels like this is what I want you. I want you to do an exercise. Read it out loud, your version. Then when I send it back to you, read my version out loud and, and, and just close your eyes and understand how it feels. Just listen to what to, it feels. Yeah, I didn't even have to read it out loud. Just looking at the words and how you just move the words around. Um, and I actually consider myself a pretty decent wordsmith. So um, I think it's a special skill set. Um, I do appreciate that. It's the um, number one skill set. It's the only one that matters to me. Watch this. Take away every single thing, every single skill. If Jesus and all the disciples came down and said, KTR, we're doing a, we're doing a, a we're doing a deal. You can only keep one of your skills. And mm -hmm. I got a lot of them. You can only keep one. Please, Jesus and everybody else. Don't take away the ability to write. Done. You can keep that. Because everything I do works off the writing. Every single thing I do works off the writing. I don't care if you see one of my social media posts. It take, I don't have a team of people to do that for me. I don't process it through Jasper. I write it myself. Mm. Now, now, bigger projects, I need to run it through Jasper because I'm, I'm required to do a lot of writing. I want to do that much writing. I need it fast. So I'm going to take it out and then I'm going to take Jasper's going to give me the template and then I'm going to go through it and clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to finesse it. I'm going to move the words around just like I did with yours. Mm. See, I need to yeah. send it back to you so you understand that. And, and I recommend to all of you, you need to read it out loud. The reason why you want to read it out loud is because you need to understand how it's going to sound to the person who's reading it. That's the way it's going to hit. It's going to hit them like, damn. What did, what did Joe say at the beginning? What did Lisa put in the chat? What did you notice when I was walking through the needs assessment to the client? When I was breaking down the managerial supervisory level? When I was doing the needs assessment as I was going through a role play, like the way I talked to the meeting planner? What did you notice, Bernice? I noticed that it, it was a consulting session. It was, it was actually free free coaching. Yeah. Does it sound like I understand what they're going through? It does. Was I stuttering? Not at all. You got to know. It's the phraseology. The reason why it sounds so the way it does at the level that it does 
because I understand the exact words up here. This is called the psychology of achievement. I understand the words that they're looking for, and I know what they're going to say to me before they even say it. Like, this is literally when you've got hundreds of bits, hun hundreds of millions of bits of data in your head. All I'm doing is moving the phraseology around, and I'm waiting for my turn to speak. Like, Bernice, as much as we love to talk, and we're very loquacious as orators, I love to listen. Because this is what I'm thinking to myself the whole time Bernice they're talking. Watch this. I'm, I'm not even going to show you my face. I just want you to hear my voice. This is what I'm saying to myself the whole time they're talking. Okay, I've heard that bullshit before. All right. <laughs> I know exactly the situation that they're in. Okay, just let them, let them keep talking. Don't say nothing, Kevin. Don't say anything. Listen. And by the way, I got a pen in my hand. And I'm jotting down everything they're saying. And then when they finish, this is what I say to myself, Bernice. I can't wait until she's finished. Mm -hmm. Can't wait until it's my go. And when it's my go, leave the ego out of it. Leave the living on front street, big flexing. None of that matters. The only thing that matters right now is that I need to listen to me carefully because this is the, this is, I'm very intentional when I say these words. I am going to directly address every single challenge that that mm -hmm. meeting planner has and we ain't getting off the phone until she clearly understands and i use she because 85 percent of meeting planners are women 92.3 percent of people that's ever hired me to speak has been women now we're not getting off the phone until i directly address her problems when my, when my wife brings me something she said babe i need to talk to you for a second if she calls me kevin i know it's really serious because she never calls <laughs> me Kevin. when she says she said, Kevin, we need to talk. Oh, okay. All right. I stop everything. I listen. And then I help her solve her problem. Because guarantee you, whatever it is, is something that she needs my help with that she couldn't solve herself. So when she needs to rely on me, then I'm going to help her solve her problem. Meeting plan is the same way. We're not getting off the phone until she clearly understands that I, whether or not I even say these words, whether or not, Bernice, didn't I say it to you? I said, Vernice, I really don't give a damn whether or not you say yes or no to me. That ain't my role right now. It, my role is not for us to do business. My role is that you understand what your speaker business isn't doing and what it should be doing. Now, did I make that clear before we hung up the phone on our very first call? Yes, you did. And it, and it took you some time to double back because you was busy. But when I finally got your ear, see, if you all need to listen to me because I used to be so greedy in this business when I was in my 20s. I was coming off of hustling dope for five years and I was doing real estate. So when I was in my 20s, I was taught to be greedy. I was taught to ask for the sale, go in real strong. And I paid the price dearly for it. The moment I hit about 28, 29, 30, when I started learning how to serve people at the highest level possible. And it was a paradigm shift that I felt embarrassed and ashamed that I took the other approach. See, just like I told Joe, Lack of patience. That's what happens when you're in your 20s. I learned a valuable lesson. Many of you don't have any patience. See, you want to start talking about hitting the stage and talking about how good it's going to feel when you're on stage with the microphone in your hand. But you need to put that same kind of energy into this phraseology and this messaging. And that is why this is the number one skill. Vernice, I have hard data. Tens of thousands of these calls that I've done. I deal with 25 to 35 speakers globally every single day. On average, they have 10 to 30 plus years worth of professional working experience. 90% of them are horrible copywriters. And I'm talking about including the celebrities and the New York bestselling authors, people that have penned books. They're horrible copywriters. Trevor Romaine has sold over a million books. The number one thing he said he got out of this coaching platform is the phraseology to his signature program. That's why he's earning bigger fees now. You got it? I got it. You got to put more time into it. See, you I, listen, Vernice, let, let me ask you a question. Because see, a lot of times, Vernice, we fall into traps when we're seasoned professionals. You are a subject matter expert. You're, you're at the top of your game. I know you're good at what you do. But sometimes we fall into a trap. And we say to ourselves, yeah, I'm doing what KTR says. Are you really doing it? This is the question I want you to ask yourself. 
Have you talked, have you spoken directly to 25 to 50 meeting planners? Have you asked them direct what their challenges are due to the pandemic? Just, just, no. just keep it real with me. Have you? No, not, not 25, but I don't know, maybe 15 this year. Okay, 15 this year. What kind of questions did you ask them? Did you have, did you take a deep dive? How was your company, how was your company impacted due to the fallout caused by the pandemic? Mm -hmm. how, what, what has happened to your level of anxiety? What's happened to your employee engagement? Did you talk to me about that? I'm just curious. I'm taking a poll. See, this is what I'm doing with my clients. I'm taking a poll. Hey, I only need, I only need two to five minutes. I'm taking a poll. I, I need to understand what you're going through. Because I don't understand it. See, I play dumb. I don't understand what you're going through. I got a different kind of struggle over here in my company. I need to know what you're going through. See, if you're not asking them these kind of questions, you're really not getting the answers. And maybe that's what's reflected in your phraseology to your signature program. See, I'm trying to help you. If you listen to the market, the market will tell you exactly how you need to phrase your mental health programs. This is why Michael, they can't get enough of Michael Towers right now. His signature programs are so beautifully written. Do yourself a favor and go to go to uh, uh, speaking. Wait a minute, I, I gotta I gotta pull up my speaking of, speaking of your success. I've been through and through his um, website. Let me tell you something. My, Michael suffers from OCD. All right, he suffers from OCD. I'm gonna tell you the reason why I'm I'm the way I am and Michael the way he is. We we both have the same thing. Now Michael has been diagnosed with it. He's on medication. I have never been diagnosed with it, but I, I am obsessive with writing copy. I am obsessive with this business. I'm talking obsessed like you ain't never seen before in your life. Like my wife, she can't stand it. She said, listen, you, 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 you're doing too much right now. I'm not ready. I'm not prepared to deal with you. So before I go deal with my wife, especially after the Monday Q&A and I've been lit, oh, I, I got I to gotta calm down for at least an hour and a half before I can even be around her. She don't even, she, I'm, too, I'm too lit, see? I am obsessed with getting the messaging right. The reason why Michael Towers signature programs are what they are is because he literally, it's the first time I ever seen it on our platform. He literally took the signature program template and turned it into some other kind of different shit. Mm -hmm. He's a genius. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because he obsesses with how to help these people overcome addiction and mental health. He is one of the rawest storytellers and Bernice you saw him at the showcase mm -hmm. his level of I don't give a fuck it's very rare it's in the category of mine his level of vulnerability and understanding where people are in a dark place because he's been there overcoming that's the reason why he's winning so much in the marketplace. It's hard for me to describe it, but that's the best way for me to describe it. He's obsessive with solving the problem and that he's overcome the darkest moments in his life, being bullied and everything else. And when he talks, it hurts. It hurts me to hear him talk. That's how keeping it real that he does. Now, most speakers, they're embarrassed to share that level of vulnerability. And when I say, Vernice, you're holding back, I'm saying that you got to get more dirty with it. You got to get more grimy with, the, with, with your story, with your verbiage, because the thing that you're helping people do, the thing that you're skilled at helping people do, I need you to bring out more of your pain that you've been through. Mm. And I don't see that reflective in, your, in all of your signature programs. They're good, but see, when I send it back over to you, I'm, I'm saying to you, I'm giving you an example. I'm giving you a baseline. I'm telling you that I want you to share more pain. That's all. And if you, when you come up with that kind of phraseology, they are gonna be on you like white on rice, like they are with Michael Thomas. He got his first international speaking engagement. I just had a Zoom session with him this morning because we're breaking down the footage and we're gonna give everybody access to the raw footage and the pictures in the video. So we have a plan by Sunday to have that at least turned in. And when he told me that today, I mean, you should have saw the look on his face. He was damn near in tears. He mm -hmm. didn't think it was possible. Michael Towers wanted to fight me because in his mind, he wanted to be like Eric Thomas. I said, Michael, it's only one Eric Thomas. I suggest 
that you don't focus on motivational speaking and you focus on being a leadership speaker. He said, no, no, that's not what I want to do. I mm -hmm. said, Michael, trust me. Just trust me. Just follow the system. I literally had to stop him from, because he told me he was going to meet me down the beltway and he was going to whoop my ass if it didn't work. He literally threatened. <laughs> I, I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you the truth. Ask him. So when, when we got in, he said, I'm not, I'm not in there playing no games, man. He got in and he got, see, he, he, he uses his mental disorder as an advantage. Mm -hmm. He got in and started doing the work. He, obs he obsesses with it. So anything I told him, once, I, once, once he knew that I knew what I was talking about, he went in there and he started crushing everything. He got his speaker business set up and he got it into the marketplace. Now, we talked about a, another strategy, but the reason why Michael's a very rare exception to where Speakers Bureau, like Sherm, is one of the biggest HR, uh, uh, one of the biggest HR Speakers Bureaus in the marketplace. I think they they are the biggest. They can't get enough of Michael. All he did was take everything from his signature programs and everything we taught him to do, and he plugged it into the Sherm system. And now he, got, he booked his first international speaking engagement and he hasn't even been doing this shit for a full year. You got to mm. be more vulnerable, Vernice. I know it's hard to let it out, but I need you to go back to the origin of the pain. And I need you to just reflect enough of it in there where it's going to make a real connection to be like, damn, you put him in a very difficult position to tell you no. Am I making sense to you? You are. Okay, that's all I want you to do. And I believe that if you take a deeper dive and you just you, you, you just give me something to work with and I'll send you back to phraseology. Now, you one of your signature programs, we don't need to touch it because I said, send me, dig a little bit deeper, send it to me and I will reword everything for you and then you're going to be ready to go to market. Is that sound fair? That sounds fair. I'm and here. You answer, my other, you answer my other question in advance and that was going to be around the raw fit, footage and pictures. Yes, we. Uh, Michael picked a deadline. He said, "I will have all that stuff. We will have a link, so you can you can have your your raw performance footage with all of the camera angles of everything we shot individually because it's like eight hours worth of footage. So we can't give it all to you. But what we're going to do so I can keep the the wolves at bay right now. I'm going to give you all. I got to reach back out to Will. Will's dad passed away. I needed to let him have his moment." I'm going to reach back out to him and he needs to give me another link for all of the footage. E. Mitch also took pictures. It's just like hundreds of pictures. I need to get E. Mitch to put them in a, all in a folder. And, and Michael, Mike Ware already sent his over in a folder. I transferred that before the, before the, uh, mm -hmm. before the um, Dropbox link expires. So I already have those pictures and we're going to have it all by Sunday. So that's the plan for that. I was getting ready to send out an email blast tomorrow morning to let everybody know, but that's the plan for that. Okay. Yeah, and thank you for your patience, you. by the way. Yes, ma'am. Thank yeah. you so much. Everybody's been going through a lot. Everybody's been going through a lot of emotional stuff. So, but that's not no excuse. We're going to get around to it and we have a plan of action in place right now. And that's what we're going to do. Did you have any other questions or comments? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. I love you. Just let us know what you need and we got your back all the way. Remember, it's a process. And, and you are almost finished with your process so you can move on to the next stage, which is upgrading all of your sales tools. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you real soon. You're very welcome. Very welcome. This is why we're in business. We love uh, Brian Rehorn. I haven't heard from Brian in a while. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Doing real good. Brian, are you, are you working on your phraseology to showcase in January? Absolutely. That's why um, I'm asking you to read, uh, to let me read the opening paragraph so to speak sure and, and to see where you get there's one part it just hit me this morning mm -hmm. that don't sound right uh i've done this i've been working on it a couple of weeks and uh uh and i set a deadline for tomorrow okay uh, I'll cool. have it this way i'm gonna uh videotape it and and just listen to it i, I plan on listening to it um do it on my phone and just play it all night when I'm sleeping. Good. You should. You should. Read it out loud to me. Let me hear what you got. I'm all ears. Take Hi, I'm, Bri I'm Brian Rehorn. 
I'm here today discussing ways one can enhance life with commitment and determination while enjoying the journey. You don't have to believe what I'm about to say, but if you open your mind and your heart to the possibilities about, about what I'm about to say is true, then your life will change forever. It's the principles that govern life, your life. I'm here speaking about recovery-based principles, honesty-based principles, mindset-based principles, and service-based principles. And then I go on to break each one down, and then I go into my experience. And I know my wrap-up at the end is a little weak. I, uh, and, and I'm going to work on that. But the main body of it, uh, I got to tweak one or two things in it, and, and I'll, uh, it, it'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me make a quick comment. So your opening, I need you to send that to me because I can make your opening even stronger than that. But I like, I like the way it's flowing. Like you're, 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 you're telling, this is who I am. This is what I came to do. The, you jump right into the value of the signature programs or what you're going to offer. So I'm like, oh, okay, he ain't wasting my time. And then all you got to do is open up those bullets, get, deli deliver the value, the key takeaways, help the meeting planner achieve their desired outcomes and their learning objectives. A lot of speakers from the last time, they specifically said, my signature programs are designed to build strategic partnerships with meeting planners. And then the boom, they got into it. Like they specifically said the word meeting planner or you know, key decision makers at the at at, at these uh the head of training and development, which was which was great. Uh, they were very intentional. So Brian, it's okay if the if the if your ending you don't feel like it's it's too strong. So what I want you to do is I want you to send the whole thing over to me. Let me go over. I have some suggestions of how I can improve your introduction. You need to attack your introduction with more authority. You're too cavalier going into it. You need to, my name is Brian Rehorn and I teach dot, 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 dot. See? I got it. Yeah. I yeah. See don't it. worry about it. Send it to me. Send it to me. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you some suggestions to upgrade it. And if you send me the, the closing, I'll fix that for you as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just like to share uh, in getting ready for the uh, the sixth. Uh, I went clothes shopping and I picked a couple of places. I walked up to this place in that in an industrial area in Miami. I mean, there was graffiti all over the place. I looked at the place and I was like, "I'll be in here 15, 20 minutes. I'm, I'm out of here." I went in. Yep. An hour and 20 minutes later, and a thousand dollars later, I have my attire to come to the uh Aha. In the yeah. Game. Brian, Thank Brian, you. Brian's gonna be looking very, very fresh. Nothing wrong with it. Hey, Brian, by the way, there are some speakers, it's uh the women, the women just uh, you know, uh they, they the pageantry at the showcase was amazing. So some of the people bought a different outfit for the red carpet, and this time we're doing the red carpet at night. And we're going to get to all of the pictures and stuff out the way and the content and the interviews because it's easier for me to manage. We're going to do that on the fourth. And then on the fifth, we're going to showcase all day. On the sixth, we're going to showcase all day because we have more speakers because of the high demand of what happened at the last showcase. So if I were you, I would maybe bring another jacket to just have a different look on the red carpet. Or maybe you could just go business business for your for your uh, showcase performance, and then maybe take the tie off and go business casual for your red carpet interview the night before. See, if you got two different outfits on, then I, you'll, I'll catch you in two different looks. That's just <laughs> something to think about. Because clearly, clearly you're putting some effort into your attire, which you should, <laughs> which you should. Hey, I met your equivalent in the clothing industry. <laughs> this guy, this guy, the way he did it, his presentation, uh, it, he put two suits up there. He went and got about 15 shirts and about 20 ties. He nice. showed me how to, how to intermingle one. This one will work with both of them. A white shirt is good with this. A blue shirt was good with that. But this one mixed with that suit, it was unbelievable. I, I recognize the value. Just like when we get on our call the first time, I recognized the value right away. And as you said, uh, uh, I, I told you, I don't have the money, but I found the money. Hey, Brian, listen to this carefully. All you need, if, if you're a gentleman and you can you can go to 
any haberdashery in the world, and it's really important to understand this, all you need is a brown, black, blue, gray, and uh, yeah, yeah, brown, black, blue, gray, and like a charcoal. And that those five colors, you can have 75 different suits, combinations out of all of that. You need a white shirt, you need a powder blue shirt, you need some different color shirts and you can create all these different looks. So this is the reason why it's so important that when the guy came over to you, see, you just weren't a number or a commission to him. He bought you different things because he probably knew what you look good in because he does that professionally. And I know you're gonna look like a million dollars. I could tell the effort that he put into bringing all the ties, all the shirts, all the different suit combinations. When you walked out of there, did you feel special? Oh, absolutely. There you go, because that guy knows how to deliver service. See, I pay attention to this. I do surveys. When I'm traveling, I look at the people who delivered the best service. So I remember one time <clears throat> I was in Atlanta and I went to IHOP. My bill was only between two people, it was only like $33. We just had breakfast. So when the bill came over, the, the woman was so outstanding for her service. I tipped her $50. So the manager had to come over to make sure that that wasn't a mistake. I said, no, I tipped her more than the bill because of the level of service that she provided. When I was ready to go reach for my coffee, my coffee was full. It's the kindness that she displayed. It's the way she bought the food out. It was, everything was, she knew what she was doing. I, I, I reward that. I look at all of that kind of stuff. And the guy that I was with, he said, man, I need to start hanging out with you. I've never tipped a person $50 in my life. I said, the people in the service industry, when they, when they deliver service the way she did, they deserve a big tip. And that, when you bless somebody like that, it always comes back to you. Oh, always you, leave a nice tip, man. Always. You, you just described my life. I can't tell you how it's changed so much in the last month. Uh, it, Brian, I can hear it in your voice, bro. I haven't heard you this. I haven't heard you this excited. The last time you were this excited was when you first joined the program. Because you've been through a rough, you've been through a rough bid, man. Uh, I'm, hey, I'm happy hey, to hear your energy is on a different level. Hey, uh, and it really was a wake up call when I was uh, cleaning my uh, computer. Actually, I was looking for, I was looking for my signature programs because I, I left them over at someone's house. I was like, damn. I, I, and I went looking, you know, I joined this almost two years ago. I was like, damn, two years, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Yep. And it's going to be okay. Yep. Cause I am okay. You are man. You, you know what? I like, I like that phraseology. That's a good way to do the last call for questions as we're wrapping up the Q and a, you said, this is the way it's supposed to be. You know where you got to be in your mind to understand that I've had one of the top worst, the top five worst Mondays ever in the history of me and Austin doing business. Today was horrific. One call changed the game. One call I had with one woman who her level of appreciation took away all the bad calls that I had because she really said, you know what? I've been putting this off for too long. I need what you have to offer. She said, Kevin, the, the reason why I shied away from it is because there's so many people been in my ear. I said, but have anybody ever talked to you this way before? She said, no. She said, and you start helping me for free. I said, what is it going to be like when we work together? She said, and we're going to work together. She said, you might as well put me back on the schedule right now for Wednesday morning because we're moving forward. I said, that, that literally, Brian, that literally... <laughs> Save Brian, I, let me tell you something, Brian. Forget about all the confidence that I have. I was a broken man today, bro. It was, <laughs> bro, it was so rough. I listen, I sent Austin a message, which he, he don't want to. I said, bro, it has literally been the Hindenburg. My whole shit was coming down in flames. But one lady said that she appreciated me on a level like I could feel it. And it, and it brought my confidence back, bro. It let me know that this is why I'm in business. See, I'm not, yeah, I want to make money. And when I don't add some people to the follow-up call, like I did you, Brian, and many other students on our platform, yeah, of course, of course, it, of course you feel fractured, but it only takes one thing 
to let you know why you were put on this earth to do business. And Brian, I don't want you to forget that. I, Brian, you're going to understand it when your colleagues come over to you at Showcase, like everybody else that was at Showcase and people walked up to him and said, oh my God, thank you so much for being so vulnerable. Remember, the more vulnerable you are, the more you're helping people. And as a speaker, it's difficult for us. Brian, I cried. Samantha Mitchell said one of the nicest things I've ever had anybody say. She said, KTR, when I saw you cry, because trust me, when I was crying we're on the stage with Eric Mitchell, we were all we were all about to lose it. But I couldn't hold it back, bro, because it was just one of those moments. I didn't anticipate it, but it just all came out. She said, you show me that you, she, you show me that it's okay to be vulnerable. Because people think I got it all figured out. I'm telling you, today was horrific. Today was horrific. But you know what? I don't feel that way now. Because I could be in the dumps, but when I do the Q&A and I know that I'm providing value, when I know I'm providing value, brother, I know I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing that's going to get people the right result. I only care about servicing people at the highest level possible, Brian. And if that's the shift you've been feeling, you need to stay in that energy, brother, because I'm telling you right now, you have blessings coming to you that you don't even understand what's getting ready to go down, bro. You just got to stay in your energy and push through. And the extra money that you're investing in showcase and your, your attire, it's going to all pay off, bro. You got any other questions or comments? I got to get ready to wrap up. I'm doing the last call for questions, everyone. We're going to end, end it with Brian Rehorn, unless any of you have any questions. If you, if you do not have any questions that you want me to directly address here, remember Austin, is, is uh, he's in flight right now, so he can't talk. But send all your questions to support at speakerfocus.com. Devin Mitchell, that's absolutely right. Yep, KTR uh, gave me permission. Yep. I, I'd just like to say one thing. Kevin, yes, sir. already paying off financially. Oh, that's a good thing. Already. It's, stuff's coming my way. I'm, I'm not expecting it. I didn't expect it to come my way with the service I deliver yep. as a director for my associates. It's It's... I'll just say this. God works in mysterious ways. Man, you think he don't? You think he's not working? Won't Dang. he do it? Won't he do it? You got to be one with the <laughs> universe, bro. This is, what, this is what it's all about. Like, you really understand what your assignment is. There's many people that's afraid of the assignment, Brian. Don't be afraid of the assignment. See, if you are afraid of the assignment, share that in your messaging. I was afraid of the assignment. I hear this every day. I was running from the call in KTR. That's why there's a lot of people that say they want to be a speaker, but all they really want to do is talk shit. They don't really want to speak. They don't really want to grow a business. They don't want to set it up the right way so they can really change lives. See, you just want to change a couple of lives at the water cooler at work. You just want to hang out and talk shit with your friends while you at top golf because you can sling it 250 yards and hit it over the net. You just want to do that. You don't really want to speak. You don't really want to go out here and put some boots on the ground and be on some Mother Teresa shit and really change lives. See, when you're ready to do that, that's what you want to come talk to me because I'll help you change lives. Illustration, beast conversation, Brian. You got that's anything else for me? No, that's it. That's good. I'll send that over tomorrow. Please send it over, bro. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Just no. let me let me look at the flow and I'll help you with it. Okay. But uh, I'll send you the whole thing or just the opening and the ending? No, nah, send me the whole thing. Send me everything you got. I want to I wanna look at it. Okay. Right. You got it. Thanks. Okay, man. Love you, Brian. Peace, man. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to end the uh, wrap of the group call, uh, the Q&A. And if you have any additional questions, by all means, it's still not too late. I can still take some of them. If you got any questions, fears, or concerns, by all means, share it with me. This is not the world's number one platform for speaker marketing for no reason. This is a reason why you do business with us because we're more than willing and equipped and prepared to, to handle any and every question pertaining to growing your speaker brand. A lot of you are getting a lot of breakthroughs in this coaching program. A lot of things are happening to you. You're feeling uncomfortable. Sit in the discomfort. You are going to get the biggest blessing you've ever seen in your life if you can just work through it. 
Don't be afraid to share your vulnerabilities. Don't be afraid to <clears throat> understand that you are uniquely and specifically designed to serve people at a high level. We love doing it at speakerfocus.com. I truly appreciate the ones who share, the ones who put things in the chat, the ones who submit support tickets. We really, really appreciate it. We are officially in holiday season. I heard my first Christmas song for the other day. It was a little early for me, but I said, you know what? It got me in the spirit. So I'm gonna stay in the festive holiday mood spirit for the rest of the year. And we are going to finish the year out strong. It is truly a wonderful time to be growing a speaker brand and get your speaker business into the marketplace. Ask me the questions and let us help you. All right. On behalf of the entire staff at speakerfocus.com, I genuinely, truly love and support all of you. I want to see you win at the highest level possible. Remember, winning in this business is using the proper phraseology, and letting that be the foundation that you're going to build everything off your speaker business. Let everything work off of your phraseology. Let everything work off of your signature programs. Let everything work off of your sales tools. Because when you get that right and it gets locked in, you're going to have leverage like you never had before in your life. They don't have the leverage. You do. You can go to anybody to find a budget that's a good fit for your signature programs, but they can't, they can't go anywhere else in the world to find your brand and what you deliver. And I want you to remember that. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. You are that good. People do believe in you that much. I believe in you. Keep doing whatever it is that you're doing and manage your speaker business. Keep your head down and put the effort in and you will see the reward. I see you same time, same place next week. Ladies and gentlemen, stay focused on your goals and dreams.